and right. welcome to another fun Friday edition of Ripping the Rack podcast. America, fuck yeah. Canada, fuck yeah. <laughs> and I'm Brian. <laughs> and that's Brian. I got the king of the north. I got Brian. I'm Tim with a trifecta of good times. Uh, <laughs> there is no Maki pins tonight. Uh, he's apparently doing that adult thing called work. He tried to make money. He, he's yeah. apparently trying to make money. It's embarrassing, really. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, so so a son tells his father that uh, I have an imaginary girlfriend. Father just sighs and says, you know, you could do better. Son goes, thanks, Dad. I was talking to the girlfriend. I was talking to the girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) Funny. The son's name must have been Yim Didero. Yim Didero. I didn't. I don't find that funny. I find that hilarious. I find it very funny. Yeah. And what's this? I hear you have a long lost, like some form of female or Tina something. I don't know. Tina Didero. Tina (laughs) Didero. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. What are we what talking about, Tim? Is that the only one? Is that all you got? Just the That's one all, I, Well, I, I said a bunch earlier, but those were even too bad for me to read. Yeah, we're not repeating uh, those on TV. What? Yeah. Yeah. Tim, I, we can I just, see the reflection of your uh, computer in your glasses, just so you're aware. Yeah, you too, so Calvin. Stop, stop watching Good. porn. Good. <laughs> Tim, stop watching porn. No, well, some of these I've already said before. So I can't really go there. You gotta find better ones. Hey, how is we a just, woman like a? No, I can't do that one. Listen, we just we just spent an hour sitting here. You couldn't have found two jokes. No, because I I was I don't know. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, so I'd like to congratulate a couple of people first and foremost. I'd like really okay. like to congratulate uh, Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos for getting up to space. Uh, as Brian In a said. Wiener? As Brian, oh yeah, no, Jeff no, Bezos. that's Jeff Bezos. He launched a giant cock into space. Yes. Yeah. If that day, if you if you didn't see that and said that's a dick, I I don't know what oh, you're looking at. It, it oh, was absolutely. Com- it was a hundred percent a dick. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know he was sitting there being like, uh, "What do you want the rocket to look like?" And he's like, "A I big dick, penis. dick, yeah. just a giant phallic. Just give it to me, take it up, and just go." You know that was one of the things. Like that had to be the the final straw for his wife before they got divorced. He's like, I'm going to space, and she's like, I I've had enough, Jeff. You're not. Yeah. And he just made that into a big giant dick to be like, I told you. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a big giant penis, like yeah. I I just I really can't say some of these jokes that I want to say, and but I really want. Would you say go them. to space, Tim? I think so. Yeah, I think, if you, I, think, <laughs> I, I no, I I think that'd be pretty cool. It's only two hundred uh, thou. And if you're wondering why I'm dressed the way I am and why Calvin's dressed the way he is, uh, ultimately I have no fucking idea why I'm dressed this way. But I just thought it'd be cool to look like a total d bag. And then I decided to join. Why'd him you change? Uh, because I just thought it'd be cool. Yeah. Nice. I got you. I got. I got. I got what you're saying. <laughs> okay. I, 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 you know. Oh, I've got my best pickup line. I'm gonna. Th- Here's a pickup line for you. This is totally inappropriate. If you're listening and you're under the age of 18, earmuffs. Uh, if you're you highly sensitive, earmuffs. If you're easily offended, please put your earmuffs on. I'm giving you the opportunity to put your earmuffs on. This really isn't that bad, but I just want to be clear. That this is highly offensive in three, <laughs> yeah. two, one. I may not go down in history, but I'll go down on you. That's not offensive at all. It's kind of boring. Not at all. Wow, that was a lot of built. It's a lot like uh, a lot like Tim's Tim's personal life. A lot of whole build up and not a whole lot at the end. Do you want to do you want to come a to lot, my time a machine? Lot, a lot of talk and no result. Do you want to come to my time machine? We'll stop somewhere between sixty eight and seventy. Huh? Jeez. No. Get and you're, huh? you're you're getting bad at these. I think you gotta. I think you have to uh, take the week and you have to 
get a list that you actually are I, good. And... I, are you my new boss? Because you just gave me a raise. Oh, That's not horrible, but it's not good. All right, so what are we doing today? Let's talk yeah. something. Let's play Carpenter. First, we'll get hammered, then I'll nail you. Huh? Yeah, that one was good. That one was good. I'll give you that, that one. Is that better? Okay, we'll yeah. stop on let, now. Let, let's play Army. You lay on the floor, and I'll blow the hell out of you. <laughs> I actually kind of like that one. Nice. Brian, Brian, we need to get a soundboard, and we every time he does a stupid one, put him. No, no, no. No, no, no. Ooh. All right, Tim. What? what are we talking about? Our fearless leader in your America tank top. America. With your twenty-two know. caliber arms. These are. I can't even put them up there. Let's get down here. Anyway, you can't see them. I know. That's why I went down. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh yeah. God. Oh fuck. I visited my friend at his new house. Oh, by the way, this is a true story. Oh, totally. this is a true story. Okay. Totally true story. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I So I visited this. Wait, what's today? Today we're, we're taping on Wednesday night, so this must have been Monday <laughs> afternoon. I uh, visited a oh, friend of mine wow. at his new house. He told me to make myself at home, so I threw him out. I hate having visitors. Oh, goodness. No. Uh. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is terrible. Who invited you, anyways? Wow. No. Yeah. So if anyone is still listening. We do have you, a topic. If you're yeah. still listening, uh, we are doing top it's kind ten. Of, it's yeah, it's kind of it's kind of related because as of yesterday, we have a new NBA champion, the Milwaukee Bucks. Congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Congratulations, yeah. he played. Yeah, he Giannis played, and oh, I ain't gonna he plays it. like a man possessed. Unbelievable. 50 he was, points, set, or 17 out of 19 from free throws, 61%, was not, percent, yeah, five was blocks. Not, was oh, oh, my. He wouldn't let them lose that game. Ever. He was not going to lose that game. No. Uh, by the way, we are not sponsored by Body Armor, but if you like Body Armor, this new blue raspberry – Friggin' amazing. And if you don't chew big red, fuck you. <laughs> if you don't this, chew big red, fuck you. <laughs> this is a maze balls. If you don't chew big red, fuck you. <laughs> uh, oh, good stuff. Good old good Will stuff. Ferrell. <laughs> so, oh, God, I love Will Ferrell. You know what? Yeah. Eventually, we need to do top 10 Will Ferrell one liners. Oh, one-liners. Oh, that yeah, that's pretty good. That'd yeah. be a good one. But what's I our top we, ten today, Tim? Did we just become best friends? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, today's top today's top ten list will be our favorite basketball players. All set. Nice. There you go. Very good. That, I'm going to go. That will be. We thought without without Marky here, he is not a basketball fan. He's not a fan. An NBA fan. So, considering he's doing the adult thing and, and working. working, then we're working. This is hard work. This, this is, is hard work I can't, listening to you way, every day. Like, I can't see. I work. can't see shit in these sunglasses inside. <laughs> Just so you know, so I wear my sunglasses at night. So you can. So you can. So I can. So I can. So it's a lot of hard work. Oh my god! I literally can't. I can't see shit. Uh, so, uh, Brian, who, who do you got? Number 10. My number 10 is, he played for the Indiana Pacers, and it's Reggie Miller. I was a big Reggie Miller fan. Loved all the trash talk. I liked the – basically, I didn't like the Knicks when I was a kid for some reason. I don't know why. I just wasn't a Knicks fan. Still not. I'm still not a big Knicks guy. Um, they don't interest me at all, but seeing him score, like, not like six eight. points, eight, eight point, points uh, in like four seconds was pretty eight cool. Points, oh, yeah, that was good, eight yeah. points in 14 seconds or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and just and the then whole thing was Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I just big Reggie good. Miller fan. Wish he'd won a title, think he's very underrated and underthought of when it talks about great basketball players. Yes, yes, uh, Galvin, 
My number 10 right now is a current uh, player. Actually, my first two are current players. Uh, Damian Lillard. I just enjoy... He's just a big moment guy. He can make any shot from anywhere, and I just, I really enjoy watching him play. I... I Yes. I enjoy watching Little play. Uh, and I enjoyed watching Reggie Miller play. I, I just... I, yeah. I like them both. Uh, mine is a very underrated player from the 80s. Played on the Detroit Pistons. No, he was not a bad boy. Kelly Trapuca. Sure. All right. I forgot you're old. Sure. So... Okay. What do you got for and, your number nine, Tim? And, no, no I, I'm going to say, I actually... No. Nobody, I had a tie. I had number a tie nine's number Brian 10. Scalabrini. No, I had a tie at number 10. I had Dominique Wilkins and I had Kelly Trapuca. I loved Kelly Trapuca. Number one, I loved the freaking name. Just try Puka, baby. Are you a oh, Mark, Mark Gerzelanek fan too? The guy, <laughs> but the guy could shoot. Like I was a, I was a fan sure. of the guys that could shoot like that. Yeah. Good. So, good. Good. Good job. Tim. You know, y'all suck. <laughs> Like, big You're old not- hairy donkey balls is what both you suck right now. Oh, hairy donkey balls. Uh, Brian, what do you got for number nine? Number, number nine. Number nine? Uh, no, I'm not doing number nine. We're gonna was we're gonna a, a uh, okay. player from uh, again when I was younger. Uh, Aunt Fernie Penny Hardaway. I was a big Penny fan. I loved the little Penny commercials. I thought he was awesome coming. Out. I loved Blue Chips. Blue Chips is still one of my favorite movies. And I just think if he didn't get hurt and Shaq stayed, they would have won a title in Orlando. I was a big Penny fan. I, I just think he was the Derrick Rose of a generation before. He had all the talent in the world and just couldn't stay healthy. But big Penny fan. I think he's a great coach. If you've seen any of his teams play, they they play very good structured basketball. Well, yeah, because he was able to get the best boosters to pay the most money for Memphis. And now it's legal. So now he's really good. Exactly. Be- Calipari was there, and then he learned from John. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Calvin, what do you got number nine? My number nine is a player who's revolutionizing the basketball game in this day and age is Steph Curry. For this, almost the same reason as Dame. He, he just he hits everything. The guy can dribble past anybody. Like, the way he handles the ball, and it's just fun to watch. As so as that. I hate with a passion of a thousand burning suns the Golden State Warriors. I hate them. And I think I it's hate- no, hold on, let me finish. Yeah. I hate them because I cannot stand Draymond Green. I think he is the most oh, overrated. Yeah. I think he is the most overrated basketball player in the NBA right now. And he only has the titles that he has because of Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. And Durant. so and Durant. So, I am a Steph Curry. I love watching Steph Curry play. Um, yeah. I don't like a lot of other players that's not on the Celtics just because I am a homer and I, yeah. I love the Celtics. Uh, mm-hmm. But, man, if the Golden State Warriors are on, it's late at night and I'm chilling out in bed and whatnot, I will put it on there just to watch a little bit of Steph Curry. Yeah. So... Uh, my number nine, um, I hated him with a passion of a thousand and one burning suns because oh, he was one. We're going because up, he was so damn good uh, that and he was a Laker. Uh, but I can't talk bad about him because unfortunately uh, he's he's passed away. Uh, Kobe Bryant. Uh, that's only that's only number nine for you. Oh man, yeah, that's number nine. You must have a lot of bad players on there. I got a lot of great <laughs> players on here. <laughs> I, while I respected Kobe, he wasn't in my top ten. He's just not one of my favorites. Like he was a good oh, ball player. I just he man. he wasn't one of my favorites. Okay. I I and when I say favorites, mean means I, I didn't necessarily like watching him because he was a Celtics killer, but right. He was a guy that I could I could watch. Like I would I would stop what I was doing if I'm flipping the channels and watch because he did things that you know they they talk about the Mamba mentality and yeah he was a he's a killer 
on oh, the yeah. court. He he yeah. was. I mean, he's, you know, he's arguably one of the top three greatest basketball players of all time. But I I enjoyed watching him. I just, he wasn't one of my favorites. It's weird. Yeah. It's like when you watch someone that's really good at their job, you're like, okay, you're you're good at that. Like after a while, to me, it didn't be. It wasn't entertaining anymore. It was like, oh, Kobe's gonna score fifty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes it, it it was it was. You know, I had more like fun when, watching people stop Kobe. Like when he put up, what was it, 60 in his last game? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he put up 60. He took 82 the shots. I mean, he took it, every was, shot. <laughs> it was feed Kobe, and you knew it was coming. I mean, that was the thing. You knew that's what mm-hmm. was going to happen, and I and I was fine with it. But, nope, Kobe, number nine. Brian, what do you got, number eight? So, again, these are my favorite players to watch and my personal favorite. Sure. So my number yeah. eight is Dikembe Mutombo. I love nice. Dikembe. I love the finger wave. No, 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 not in my house. And he played for Atlanta when Atlanta was not good. And who, who you know, if you watch basketball when you were younger, you can remember when they, when he played for Denver and they were the eight seed and they were the first eight seed to upset a one seed. And they he had the ball in his hands and he was all excited. Uh, but, you know, I, I just... I played center when I was a kid and I was typically taller than most people for a little bit until everybody grew around me. I was an early bloomer. Um, but yeah, I, I liked the defensive mentality and I, I wasn't a great shot. So Dikembe gave me something to hope for as a defensive player. <laughs> okay. My Calvin? number eight yep. is we talking about practice. <laughs> <laughs> We talking about practice? Practice. No, not the game. Practice. We talking about practice. I'm a grown Alex ass man. We're talking Iverson. about practice. Yeah, we talking about practice. Allen Iverson. Yeah. About all I can say is yep. just yeah. Allen Iverson. <laughs> so I'm old enough that I can remember Iverson basically almost not getting into Georgetown because of the uh issue he had back in high school yeah um coming out of high school he was arguably the best player in, in the game uh, mm-hmm. as a as a high school senior and uh he was absolutely incredible as you know a player at georgetown um and then he just i hated him because he was on he was on the you know on the 76ers you just hate any team that isn't the Celtics. So no, no, ba- no. Basically, we, as a Celtics fan, you're basically you hate two the teams: Lakers, really. the Sixers, the Lakers, and the Sixers are, and the and 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 Detroit, um, the bad boys, and LeBron, and anything <laughs> and anything LeBron. Um, yeah. I I hated Iverson. I respected Iverson as a player, right? But I hated him. But hate is the closest thing to love, so sure, sure, it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a circle. It's a circle. It okay, sure. Circle. It goes, it's a circle. Yeah, it's a circle. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a circle. So who's your eight? Uh, my eight. I'm going back to back Lakers. Um, which shoot me now, uh, Magic Johnson. Showtime. He was, mm-hmm. he was, you couldn't, here's the thing is, as much as I hated the Lakers, you couldn't hate Magic. You couldn't. Right. True. No, he, he, he made basketball fun to watch. He made it fun to watch. He enjoyed himself. He enjoyed the game. He certainly enjoyed his women. And, uh, yeah. who doesn't? <laughs> you know, and, and it just, uh, well, I mean, I can think of some guys that don't. Um, no, they you know, all they all enjoy their women. They just enjoy them differently than we do. True, true story. Um, mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, my recollection and my memory of Magic Johnson goes back to uh, one of the worst college basketball games ever, and that was when uh, Michigan State beat Indiana State, the Sycamores, for the title in '79. So, a little bit before your time, I get it, I understand. A little bit, but Um, you know my dad, so I'm well aware of that game. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh man, I got to tell you this. This dressing as a douchebag is not really working for me at the moment. <laughs> You're too used to being bald. <laughs> I know. Uh, Brian, well, yep, number seven. Uh, the bad boy of basketball from Detroit to Chicago and San Antonio. It's going to be Dennis Rodman. I was a huge Rodman right. fan. He's I just I love everything about Rodman because you would look at him and be like, this dude is crazy. Like he can't play. And then he'd get like 25 rebounds against you and, and single hand. Crazy good. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he would kick a cameraman in the junk and then go get like 15 more boards. Like he'd marry himself and then help you win a game by like two points because he grabbed, you know, 30 rebounds. Like he made not scoring an art in basketball. And I was a yeah, big the dude couldn't fan. score. Right? He literally could not you score. You know, he didn't start playing basketball until he was like 17. Yeah, he was like he yeah. was like a senior in high school or something stupid yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I watched the uh, was it the Thirty for Thirty or something? One of those shows that yeah, the Bad Boys, the Thirty for Thirty. Like yeah, Chuck Daly was able to like like Chuck Daly deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for being able to keep Rick Mahorn and Dennis Rodman from killing each other. Yeah, because they were both just crazy. And then uh, you know you had the Bad Boys of of Detroit that were arguably the worst team to ever win. Back to back, two back to back titles. Um, you tell me, Bill Lambeer is in a quality center. I <laughs> Bill Lambeer. <laughs> like literally. Do so, you did you know Bill Lambeer Bill has a Bill has Lambeer, a video game? You know, let me put it this way: Bill Lambeer could be in front of me, on fire, and I wouldn't piss on him to put it out. You mean if Bill <laughs> Lambeer was in a room with Hitler and Stalin, and you had two bullets, you'd shoot Bill Lambeer twice? Yes, I would. <laughs> Good Lord. Did you know he had I a video would. game? And and you know where I'd shoot him? I wouldn't shoot him anywhere other than the kneecaps. His video game is actually called, and you can look it up, Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. Uh, no, That's I've heard of it. a real video game. Yeah. I, I Oh, my God. Now probably my blood pressure's eight, gone probably, up. i got to take my medicine. <laughs> Kurt Rambis. There you go. Now, you're, now you can go way up. I... I didn't hate Kurt Rambis. Kurt Rambis took a clothesline like a champ. He sold that <laughs> thing great. He took an awful, awesome bump. Took a great bump. Uh, what, where, where are we? Number seven. So Number seven for me. Yep. It's over. BC Vince Carter. My number seven. He's a Toronto guy, so you know. I'm not a Toronto guy, but I love Vince Carter. He was just, you're, you're a Raptors fan, right? No. No, I'm not a Raptors fan. So what were you, just a Kawhi fan? No, I was just a enjoy the moment fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> enjoy the moment of everybody cheering and having fun and Canada winning. <laughs> and, and, and a championship finally coming to Toronto. Right. Exactly. Um, It's been there. It was there in 93. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a Vince Carter hater. But uh-huh. I just wasn't a I wasn't a like I don't I know. I love the dunk contest. I loved exactly. his dunk contest. Yeah. I loved so, him on a breakaway. And I thought it was cool that he was well, still playing two years ago. Yeah. Actually he played he was supposed to play last year and his team didn't make it, right? They didn't get into the bubble, so he had to retire. Like that was it for yeah, the season. Something, yeah, something like that. Um my number seven is one of the greatest three point shooters of all time. At the same time, he had made one of the most clutch three pointers of all time, playing for Miami, uh, Ray Allen. His foot was I, on the line, he was out of bounds. I <laughs> I, the line. I was a Ray Allen fan at UConn, um, and I was a huge Ray Allen fan when he was in Seattle. Fucking Judas. Wow. He's a Judas. He played for oh, Miami. Wow. And oh, man. LeBron. We just, wow. we just took a dark turn here. Holy I wish fuck. he would have gone to the Lakers instead of LeBron. Sorry, I'm a little sour on Ray Allen. Look, I... I, I Tell Ray us how Allen, you really feel, bud. Ray Allen <laughs> did what he was 
told to do when he was in Boston. And he and he helped bring us a championship. And he should have retired. <laughs> Instead, he went and won more. So the dude, the dude could shoot. Oh, hell yeah. No, I definitely. mean, you know, you got to love a guy that has a name Jesus Shuttlesworth. Mm hmm. He got game. He got game. Great basketball movie. One of my one of my favorite basketball movies out there. That Hoop Dreams and Blue Chips are my three favorites. I haven't seen Blue Chips in a long time. Good oh, movie, so though. So good. Nick Nolte. Yep. Real good. Yep. Uh, number six, Bry. Number six is my favorite player when I was a kid. Not my favorite player to watch, but he was my favorite player as a kid because I kind of came into basketball – as I, I didn't want to like everybody liked the big superstar. Everybody liked Jordan and I didn't want to be that kid. So I liked Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen is my number six. I was a big Pippen fan. I didn't think Jordan was anything without Pippen. Now, knowing what I know now, I know I was wrong. But I was a big <laughs> yeah. Scotty fan. Although watching the, um, the last dance, I kind of learned Scotty's kind of prima Donna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was just so oh, good. Big time. He oh, came yeah. from just a shitty little school, what, central Arkansas or something, and he made a Hall of Fame career. And I thought he was a very undervalued small forward at the time. Um, I think he was highly overrated as a player. Oh, I don't. I I just – he was – I think, well, I don't know. I think you always need a right hand man, and that was you Jordan. do. Like, no, you do. Like but, Steph Curry has Clay Thompson. Yep. So you got, you know, you, but Clay you, Thompson, but Clay Thompson could play on any other team and carry the team. Ah, uh, no, he couldn't. No, no, I would, even, I disagree. I, I would, I would. The the, the modern day Scotty Pippen was Chris Bosh on the Lakers. I mean, on the Heat. Yeah, but Bosh well, could play. So could Pippen. I just, I, I just, I. Pippen's the only reason they won more than twenty games the year Jordan retired. Yeah, and then what? And then what happened? You, he, he couldn't win by himself in a. No, you know, it, he was a bitch. They called the play for someone else at the end of the game, and he refused to go in the game. That is an absolute one hundred percent bitch move. Well, that has nothing to do with how he plays. So you're That's telling right. me that... Of course it has something to do with how he plays. Hey, you're telling me that out of an entire roster, let's say seven guys in the world, and you need one mark at the end, and somebody calls a play, someone calls somebody else to take the box, you're not going to be like, well, I'm not just going to I'm not going to stay here then. What? I don't know. I tried to make it into a bowling turn to prove you wrong. It didn't work out well. <laughs> yeah. He, not he the least. Got fixed up there. The guy was a total prima donna bitch. Oh, he was. Okay. Says the guy wearing the America tank top. <laughs> <laughs> that one worked better. Yeah, America? Was, yeah, that, that worked. Um, I, I never, ever in the history of Evers was a Scottie Pippen fan. I just, good player. Abs don't get me wrong. Good player. Whoopity doo, Basil. <laughs> okay, good player, uh, my, never as good as Stone Cold Steve Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to get a little, I'm a little wound up. I was tired. I I'm can good tell. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good. Uh, my number six, uh, keeping a little Canadian content, Steve Nash. Can't argue with that one. I like Nash. No. Yeah, Nash Steve very Nash, good. Play make yeah. anything. Yeah. It's just yeah. a, just a awesome. Talent. Probably the reason Kobe didn't win like five MVPs. Yeah, in the, yeah. the mid two thousand. Yeah, it's same same reason that uh, um, Shaq didn't win a couple. Yeah, and Dirk. <laughs> they were on the same team. That's dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, my numero six zero. Uh, Made me the most depressed that I'd been in a very long time uh, because the Celtics did not get the number one pick. 
Tim Duncan. Uh, Tim Duncan. I loved Tim Duncan. I loved this yeah, game at Wake Forest. He's I, further I, up on my list. I love. I, I, I hated him in Wake Forest. I don't know what I it was. I loved him. I, I I loved him. He was the perfect player for Popovich. He was oh, a yeah. perfect player to team up with David Robinson. Yeah. Um, he and honestly, he might be the perfect basketball player. Not because he, you know, he he certainly couldn't shoot outside. He had no outside yeah. shot. But Elbow in, he was pretty good. But you didn't hear shit from him for no. twenty years. No, he he rarely complained. So if he had a foul called on him, raised his hand. He scored eighteen and twelve rebounds every game. Oh, essentially, yeah. Yeah, I, he just. He played and he won, and that's the yeah. thing is, uh, and I just I loved watching him play. Do you remember who the two draft picks the Celtics took that year at three and eight were? Uh, I don't actually. Ron Mercer and Antoine Walker. Oh, that's right. See, I remember. We took now. Ron Mercer with the third pick in the draft. God, Good pick, joke. guys. Good pick. <laughs> nice job, nice job, Patino. Way Good to set that team. Way to set that team back for a, a few years. So, uh, are we on pick five? Yeah, pick five. So, I have how we came out of the Rick Patino light or the darkness of Rick Patino, and that's Paul Pierce. The truth. I have the truth higher. The truth will set you free. <laughs> when when Shaq gave him that nickname, I can remember it was it, he's the bleeping truth, and that's yeah. exactly what he said. Um, yeah. Amazing playoff performances, arguably one of the best clutch players in Celtics history. I have a guy that's higher on there that's probably way better than the clutch, honestly. But, you know, Paul Pierce was the captain of the Celtics for a reason. He was the heart and soul in Boston for a long time. And once they got him some help, it showed. And I'm glad he got his title and he earned that finals MVP the year they won it. Yep. I'll talk Paul Pierce later. I I, I can't Mm -hmm. argue with that. Exactly. Uh, my number five, and I was sticking with the teammate, uh, Dirk Nowitzki. I just enjoyed, and it, it was funny because every time we played, uh, I had um, NBA 2000, oh, what was it, 2002 for PC, and buddies and I, we'd always, we'd always do like a, a round robin and a, a playoff or whatever, and every time that we'd get the first my first pick was always Dirk I'd always take Dirk mm-hmm. first because I knew I could get the threes no matter what from outside the range from a big center and you were going to so shoot like, over everybody exactly and it was just his weird like style it was just so awkward but it was so fun to watch I enjoyed watching he's the him, gentle so. German giant yeah so Dirk was my number five Tim why do you look so why do you look so stern over there Tim yeah I know I don't know you look like a disappointed dad. Like, yeah, he was zoned out. You look like you belong on like a like one of those shitty energy drink commercials. Like, oh, Jim, <laughs> you should drink Blast Off. <laughs> Blast Off, really? Uh, That's what you I came up so. with. Brian's struggling tonight. <laughs> he is. I I, yeah. I like I like Dirk. I was gonna say uh, Dick Beater, but I didn't think you'd want to drink a drink <laughs> called Dick Beater. All so. right, welcome to. Hey, you drink, drink Dick Beater. It's going to beat you off. Uh, let's see. My wow. Number f- oh, my God. <laughs> my number five. Oh, holy hell. This, I'm, this, uh, I'm, taking you down, I'm taking you down to Five Slam and Jamma. I'm taking you to Houston. We got Hakeem, The Dream, Olajuwon at number five. Um I loved I loved the dream. I loved Hakeem. Um, he was so good. He he became so flipping awesome. Uh, and as a Celtics fan, I mean, look, I I saw him. I only saw him twice a year. Well, four times a year, whatever it was. Um, mm-hmm. But he was he was good. And they won back to back titles in the nineties. We forget about that. That's some of Robert Ory's titles. Like yeah. you had, you had 
uh, Hakeem and Clyde Drexler, Robert yep. Ori, Sam Cassell. The alien was on that. Sam Cassell looked like an alien. If you think about it. Yes, he did. Yes. Yes. He, he played did. at MCI in Maine. Sam Cassell did. Yes. Yeah. Maine Central Institute. One year on their postgrad. Mm-hmm. Number four, Brian. So, I, oh, number four. Uh, yeah. My number four, sticking with the Celtics, the big ticket, Kevin Garnett. One of the most intense basketball players I've ever seen. Loved his fixation on defense and just how bad he wanted to win. That's what I remember <laughs> about <laughs> Kevin Garnett. Oh. It's just how bad every time he stepped on that floor, he did not want to lose. And it's a like if you want to show a kid the drive to win, you have him watch Kevin Garnett play. I Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I am not sold on Garnett's number being retired for the Celtics, but they're going to retire his number. Well, no, that's that's Ron Mercer's number and John Bagley. So, I mean, they shouldn't retire it. No, they should retire Ron Mercer (laughs) or John Bagley. Yeah, yeah. Just like 11 should be retired for Dana Barrows because Dana Barrows was the man. I love Dana Barrows. I did. Loved him. Anyway, uh, yeah. my number four is, we've just talked about him, Tim Duncan. Mm. I, just, I just love watching him play. It was just fun to watch. I don't know why. It was, I just enjoyed watching Because he did Tim all Duncan the fundamentals play. amazingly yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah that's, that's my he, number he was, four. Yeah. So my number four, we're going to go back to the 80 Celtics. The 80s. Dino Raja. Oh. Eight, 80s. No, Dino was in the 90s. I know. Um, this man delivered the greatest clothesline in the history of clotheslines. JBL? When, when he took out. <laughs> oh, no. This was the original clothesline from hell. Oh, okay. Kevin He's the McHale. black hole of basketball. It was definitely. No, he, Kevin McHale was, and Larry Bird has said this, he, he would have averaged 30-plus points a game. If they'd have let anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He He had, he scored 30 a game, 20 rebounds and no assists. He was, uh, he was unstoppable in the post. A little dipsy do under Rue. Just a little, as long as Robert Parrish stayed out of his way. Well, there was that. Um, I loved Kevin McHale. I just, he, I know people i've had people say okay so you love kevin McHale, but you couldn't stand you know bill lambeer and those guys correct kevin McHale, kevin McHale played with an edge but he wasn't dirty like those guys he was good too and he was good he could play there's a reason why he had the he had the uh uh, I think he still has the Celtics uh, single single game scoring record. I think doesn't he? No, he had it. Oh, for Bird four beat days. it. Bird beat it. Yeah. The uh, next the two games later. Yeah, he had he had it for yeah. four days, and then Larry told him he was going to beat it. <laughs> yeah. So Kevin McHale, number four. Mm. My number three. Uh, my all-time favorite center. My all-time favorite big man. He's my all-time favorite car insurance salesman. It's Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I love Shaq. I love young yeah. Shaq. If you go back and watch Shaq his first two years, watch him run the break. Oh, it's yeah. scary. Yeah. And just uh, the physicalness he played with and his agility. And then he realized he didn't have to move. He didn't have to touch the ball anymore because people are fat and slow in the NBA. And he just started eating and got big. And then he yeah. went to L.A. and was dominant. But pound for pound, I think, honestly, arguably, one of – the greatest big man and one of the greatest basketball players of all time is either his rookie or his second year, Shaquille O'Neal in Orlando. Cause he could yeah. almost do it all. He could have been a better passer and we all know he sucked at free throws, but everything else yeah. so, Shaq was built for. The other cool, I do like Shaq. Um, he's in my honorable mention. Um, I had, I didn't believe this when someone told me this a, a few weeks ago about what he owns. So he owns 155 Five Guys Burger restaurants. Mm-hmm. He owns he a bunch owns, of Papaginos. He owns 40 
24 hour fitness franchises, 17 Auntie Anne's pretzels, and 150 car washes. <laughs> yeah, and he owns a bunch like, of Papa Gino's too. Or Papa John's, I'm Papa sorry. Papa John's. Yeah, yeah Papa like, John's. He yeah. spread his money out. Yeah, he, he owns nine. Yeah, nine pop, he didn't, Papa John's. He hasn't touched hardly any of his TNT money for all those years he's worked for TNT. Yeah. He just invests it all. Yeah. It, I, I had, I was, I knew he owned some restaurants and I knew he owned some things. The car dealership surprised me. Yeah. That's a tough business to have a lot of. Yeah. Um, God, it just, he's impressive. I just, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah. you can he, always ask, I mean, would, would Kobe have been as successful early on without Shaq? And honestly, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't think, I think so either. Yeah, you need, I think you maybe, need your right hand man, and Shaq was his right hand man. Co- Shaq showed Kobe how to win. So when Kobe got with Pau and Lamar Odom and those guys, he was able to beat the Celtics that year. That's yeah. how Kobe learned how to close, was because Shaq showed him how to against God. I can't even remember who they beat. The, those Lakers teams beat out of the East. The East was very bad for a long time. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, what oh, number I think we? My number Philly. Three. Yeah, that was Philly that year. With Allen Iverson and Eric Snow. <laughs> no, yeah, Lugoskis was later, but yeah, yeah, that's who Kobe and Shaq beat that year was AI. Yeah. Uh, my number three, we just talked about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant's my number three. Just yeah. enjoyed watching him A play. Bomba. Yeah, just enjoyed his mentality. So he, he was my number okay. three. Yeah, he yeah. was all right. He was all great. Right. He was good. Um, Do we all have the same one, too, maybe? No. No. <laughs> Not even remotely close. Oh, no. okay. Brian, I think you and I have the same number one. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. So my number three uh, is arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. Not named Bill Russell. Um, Michael Jordan is my number three. So, Jordan was one of those guys that I loved to hate, but I couldn't stop watching. And the more I watched, the more I hated, and the more I hated, the more I liked him. And I was a I was a closet uh, Michael Jordan fan um, for the longest time uh, until I came out and realized that Michael Jordan is probably the greatest basketball player of all time. Mm-hmm. Loved watching him play. Yeah. yeah, he uh, his shot to beat Cleveland over uh, Craig Elo. Over Craig Elo, his shot to beat Utah. Yeah, as a f- I all right, I I will keep going because he's my two, and we're getting into two. Yeah, but and he's <laughs> as as good as that shot against Brian Russell against Utah is. It's a foul. I hate to say it. It's nope. a foul. No, watch the replay and watch it in slow motion. His hands on his ass and pushes him. That's foul. Nope. Your hand could be on someone. He did not push him. I'm telling you right now, as a person that has refereed basketball games, I would not call that a foul. Number one, Brian Russell was going that way. He was moving that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, his hand was here. Sorry, I'm trying to remember which which hand it was. I that is borderline. Could it have been called a foul? Sure. It was never going to be called a foul because it was it Jordan. It was never going to be. be- it I, was his last game ever. Well, we thought it was. We thought. Does anyone really yeah. count the Wizards years of no. Jordan? No, nobody does. <laughs> I mean, I I wasn't a closet Jordan fan. I was not eight, nine, ten years old in Jordan's prime. I was that kid that was all about the Bulls. Like, but Pippen was my favorite player. But come on, you were a fan of the Bulls because of Jordan. But I I liked the Bulls back then. I was a kid of the '90s. I liked the Cowboys. I liked the Bulls. I still like the Cowboys. I don't like the Bulls so much anymore. But, um. You know, you had Steve Kerr was on that Bulls team. John yeah. Paxson, Craig Hodges, um, Jordan Pippen, later on Tony Kukone, um, just Kuko, 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 whatever. Coach, actually, even Kuko, yeah. yeah, whatever. 
Jordan don't scouted forget, him in don't the gold forget, medal game. Don't forget Bill Wellington. Weddington. Bill Weddington. 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 Yeah. yeah. Not Beef Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Beef Wellington. <laughs> Holy God. And then don't forget Horace Grant. Oh, yes. Man, Horace Grant was on a bunch of those teams. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Jordan, uh, I mean – Everyone talks about it. I'll just remind this to somebody for as many titles as Jordan won. Steve Kerr hit a really big three against Phoenix that yeah. year. Yes, he did. Yep. <laughs> yep. So yeah, got, Jordan was my two. My my number two we ta- we just talked about is Shaq. I just love Shaq, and I I even love him more now now that he's now that he's a commentator and everything. I love listening to him. He's I love. Lo- so- Ah, uh, it's he just, just so much fun. You know what I like about Shaq as a commentator? He's very much like Barkley. He just doesn't give a shit. No, and he does. He, he, and I love he knows it because, he can do it. Yeah. Because what are you going to say? What, yeah. Seriously, what is LeBron going to look say to Shaq? Yeah. Not What's Barkley going to say to Shaq? Like Barkley yeah, says stuff. Shaq exactly. just goes, "Oh, you're stupid." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, Shaq just looks at Barkley and goes, "You want one of my rings?" I mean, yeah. <laughs> I got four. You know, I just, I, I did like, I, I do like Shaq. Yeah. Um, my number two, uh, we, we've talked about is the truth. Paul Pierce. Um, Paul Pierce should have played his entire career with the, with the Celtics. Um, in the, in the world of basketball, if he had played in the seventies and eighties with the Celtics, he would have played his entire career. He never would have been traded to Brooklyn. He never mm-hmm. would. Granted, you got 432 draft picks out of that trade. Yeah, that's yeah. the only reason he went is because it helped the Celtics. No, I know. Um, and I like the fact that he did sign with the Celtics at the end. He did officially retire as a Celtic, um, as it should have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, I, I again, I liked him out of Kansas. Um, he Rock showed his shot, shot Jayhawk. He showed his toughness when he got stabbed 428 times. I don't know. No, what was it? Three times, I think. <laughs> and a night yeah. clear fight. Yeah. So, I, Paul Pierce, number two. We are at number one, and mm. we are not even an hour into the show. This it's is so, good. It's so much better when Mark's not here. There's no talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number one. Sticking with the Celtics, shocker, Homer is the great Larry Joe Bird. Larry Bird's my all-time favorite basketball player. I think Larry's the greatest basketball player of all time. I really You're do. Wrong. He, I, I don't care, Calvin. <laughs> you show me a dude that played power forward that's a better passer than Larry Bird. Show me one that's a better outside shooter, a better just all-out basketball player. He dunked like three times in his whole career. In the first part of his career, they didn't have a three-point line. And then all of a sudden, they put one in. And guess what? He decided that was going to be his domain. The man won the three-point contest, and he didn't even take his fucking warm-up jacket off and basically flipped everybody off when he walked off the court. Like, so, Larry Bird is – he was Jesus in Converse. The man is awesome. My favorite – so, and I'll get to Larry Bird in a second because he is – I'll go. He is my number one as well. Uh, I do have Larry Joe Bird, and I did write down Larry Joe Bird. Larry Joe Bird, uh, December seventh from French from French Lick, Indiana. Um, the Hick from French Lick. So, Larry Bird is one of the all time greatest trash talkers in the history of trash talkers, and you can go back and watch video and listen to all these interviews and everything else, and realize, like Xavier McDaniel's McDaniel's, who was. At the time, an all-star. He was a great player. He was getting torched by Bird. They came down. It was the end of the game. It was a tie ball game. He, They called timeout. They come out of the timeout. Bird looks at McDaniel and said, by the way, I'm getting the ball right there. I'm going to pump fake once. I'm going to step back. I'm going to shoot it from right there, and I'm going to make it. He did all of it and made it. And McDaniels could do nothing about it. Yeah. Um, you know, walking into the three point competition and going into the uh, going into their dressing room and walking in and looking around and going, so which one of you guys is playing for second? I mean, and he didn't even take his coat off and then didn't take his warm up off. Yeah. 
you know, um, it really is too bad that he suffered the uh, back injury, two major injuries, the back injury, and then um, actually just the back injury. Uh, it really is too bad because it, I don't know if he was ever right. I don't want to say mentally, but when he hit his head against Indiana in the playoffs, yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, There, if you're a fan of basketball in general, and especially if you're my age and you grew up with Larry Bird and you realize just how good he was. Special. Special. Yep. (laughs) You know, no, he was, he's a special basketball player. Yeah. You get him. You know, Michael Jordan was special. Uh, Bill Russell was special. Uh, Magic Johnson was special. You know, these players, uh, LeBron James, as much as I hate the dude, and I. Oh, he's I, special. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I do not like LeBron James. I And you know what the worst part is? The only reason, there's two reasons I don't like him. Number one, that whole televised decision. Yeah. The arrogance behind that. Yeah. And the fact is, is that at 6'10", 270 pounds, and you act like you get shot by a fifty caliber every time someone touches you, yeah. drives me batshit. You're an yeah. NFL tight end. Um, I just, Larry Bird was the epitome of the Boston Celtics. There's he no made everyone around him better. He made Robert Parrish a Hall of Famer. I'm sorry, yeah. he did. No, he did. He made Kevin McHale a Hall of Famer. And Danny, know? he made Danny Ainge relevant in basketball. Danny Ainge was relevant in basketball. Dennis Johnson was a Hall of Famer. You know, look, that 86 Celtics team, the 85-86 Celtics team is arguably the greatest basketball team ever in the history of Evers. Along with the 96 Bulls and what the 2016 Golden State Warriors, 2017. Yeah, I don't remember what that was. They were somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, you know, when Larry Bird says, you know what, guys, I'm bored today, so I'm playing left handed and goes out and scores 40 against against Portland left handed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry, Calvin, I jumped in on you, number one. No, what do you I don't have care. As, what do you oh, have as number my- one? Well, my number one's obvious is Michael Jordan. Yep. And I think mm-hmm. and I, I think my greatest moment, and I've watched it so many times, and uh, I love watching it, is when he's standing on the line and he turns to Dikembe and he goes, hey, Dikembe, <laughs> watch this. And he closes his eyes and makes yeah. the free throw. And then he just walks back like, eh, whatever. <laughs> it's like, uh, my, just so good. My One of my favorite Michael moments was I think he hit like his seventh, sixth or seventh three pointer in a game and the playoffs or the finals or whatever. And he just like he walks by and just Yeah, no, he does his shoulder shrug. His, I, don't I know. just love like, hearing yeah. the story of him and Monte Carlo in the dream team game. Oh yeah. When he's yeah. tell when he they're playing pickup and he's telling magic he's like let's put six, seven grand on it. And they're yeah. like, you're insane. Or the fact that he would be out, he literally would get done with the game, go out, have dinner, go to the casino till four o'clock in the morning, go home, shower, or hotel shower, go to shoot around, come back, play golf, and then go play and score 50. Like, yeah, yeah, do, I know. Do you sleep, dude? No. And the, yeah. fact that, and the fact that they were always getting mad at him because he wanted to put money on everything. He's like, oh, let's do this. Let's put let's put 100 bucks on it. Let's do this. Let's put 1,000 bucks on it. And they're like, they said he, no. They, they said, Dennis Rodman said, I shit you not, Michael used to gamble on the luggage coming out of the carousel at the airport. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. But, you know, though, unfortunately, his greatness on the court does not translate to him being a great owner. Oh, God. Because because he he had and and this is common of a lot of great players that turn coaches. Larry Bird was a terrible coach. No, actually, Larry Bird, Larry Bird won coach of the year. Larry Bird. Okay, was he was a good coach. coach. He's bad front office guy. He's not a good president. Uh, he, really? Because he was GM of the year too. Well, that's because he's Larry Bird. People vote on the name. I didn't. No, uh, Larry Bird. It, Larry Bird was actually one of the rare guys that that stepped into a. Coach I don't role think so. And then stepped into a GM role. Jesus, I, Brian. He I, took 
as a GM of Indiana and made them into a I, I, I mean, how much more did you want from him? He wasn't going to win a title. They were relevant before that. They were coming off multiple playoff appearances and a finals appearance, not an NBA finals appearance, but a conference finals appearance with Reggie Miller and Mark Jackson and the Davis boys. They were relevant before that. I didn't say they weren't relevant. I said he took them to that next level. Unfortunately, he wasn't going to win a title at Indiana. But he didn't, he they do went it. to a conference finals before that. You, the and next level is the finals. They didn't go to the finals. I, yeah, he they was, did. He, yeah, Larry, they did. Larry Bird, Larry Bird, Bird is the as the coach, manager, whatever. They didn't go to the NBA Finals. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They went up against the Lakers. One of the Lakers' first wins in like 2001, I think. Continue. I will look it up. <laughs> I, I, just, I just looked it up five minutes ago, Brian. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> he's not going to believe you. He's going he's he's to he's gonna okay. look it up, and then I'm going to just laugh at him. So while okay. he's doing that, we can talk about uh, one of our Mike. listeners. Oh one yeah. Of our list- one of our listeners, Dave Obey, he uh, enjoys our top tens. He tells me every week, and so um, he asked about our top tens and what we were doing. So I let him know, and he uh, provided us with his top ten. So we have uh, his number ten was Luka Doncic. Uh, yeah. His number nine, Vince Carter. Yeah. Uh, his number eight, Paul Pierce. He's a he's a Boston guy like you guys. So okay. Number eight, Paul Pierce. Number seven was Shaq. Number six was Garnett. Number five, Grant Hill. Number four, mm-hmm. Steve Nash. Shit. Number, I forgot about Grant Hill. Yeah, you forgot Grant Hill. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Number yeah. number three, I'm kind of surprised at, but I mean, I guess it's if you're watching today, uh, Jason Tatum. Number. Mm-hmm. Number two, Michael Jordan, and number one, Larry Joe Bird. Mm-hmm. So that it's was a good list. list. It's it's a good list, and I completely forgot about Grant Hill. I loved watching Grant Hill at Duke. I loved watching Grant Hill in the pros. Uh, highly his dad underrated. Was a Dallas Cowboy. Yes. Yeah. Highly underrated as a pro, I think Grant Hill was. Ankle problems, man. Yep. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, for sure this was a cool list this was tougher than i than i thought i mean i mean my top three were easy like that was like i rattled that off no issues right Um, once i got down then i was like you know i really wanted to to put tatum up there but i'm like "Ah, god he's only been in the league you know three years look at the guys we left off there's no carl malone no david robinson isaiah thomas stockton Stockton. Stockton is in my honorable mention. Um, I, I was a John Stockton fan, still am, obviously. Um, I was never a Carl Malone fan. I just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe you don't have John Stockton without Carl Malone, and you don't have Carl Malone without John Stockton, but still. Um, I just, uh, something about Malone, I just didn't like. Um, but you know you didn't have there's a lot of guys that that weren't on here um you know like a dominique wilkins and and you know um oh kevin durant the durantula i was a huge durant not a huge fan i was a fan of durant in texas i was a fan of durant with the supersonics and i liked him with oklahoma and then it's almost like you had uh, multiple personality Kevin Durant come out in Golden State, yeah, and you know carried it over to to Brooklyn. It's it's like I don't know. I'm just glad James Harden didn't make the list. I don't like James Harden. Harden. Harden will never make my list of. I can't stand watching. <laughs> Harden. Harden was on my list till I thought of a couple other people. Like I had I had Harden at my number nine, but then I thought about uh, Dirk. And Duncan, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I gotta have Duncan and Dirk up I there." I can't, I can't, I can't stand watching James Harden. I can't, I, I can't do it. Oh, I love him. Can't do it. Fun to watch. Can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> so, folks, that's our list. We appreciate, uh, we appreciate you tuning in, even though the first ten minutes was Tim shit show moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. 
we will not be doing the uh, the American douchebag look next week. I just yeah, I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I really did. I thought it'd be funny. Uh, you thought totally. wrong. No, it's funny. I just totally just yeah. I can't. I can't. <laughs> can't do it. Oh, can't it's so it. bright in here. <laughs> oh man! Wow, it is bright. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, folks, uh, the roast is coming up. Um, we may need to come up with a better way of getting the videos. Uh, Josh Daly sent the video. He did do it. Um, but it's in like eight different videos Segments? because oh, okay. it's long. It's yeah. So it, you know, so he had to do it like a roast, a roast, a roast, a roast, and then something nice, something nice, something nice, something, you know what I mean? So, okay. It, we, we, we may want to figure out a different, avenue for this uh maybe it's get a hold of one of us and we can skype you and then just record it mm -hmm. while you're doing it okay. uh, with the caveat of whoever is skyping if calvin if it's you if it's brian if it's you whatever um that we're not saying a word when we do it, it means right. you gotta mute, you gotta mute yourself you can mute yourself and you can turn off your camera that may that might be the best option right there Right. Uh, but we'll talk about it and we'll we'll figure it out. We still got about seven weeks before that. Um, Josh, thank you for getting in, you know, getting your uh, video in. Um, can't wait to roast you back because, dude, you don't know how to roast people. So this is going to be great. <laughs> like, look, there's right there. You that, have a Jimmy Carr how, moment. See how yeah. easy that was to roast like someone without them even realizing it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's coming up uh please get us your questions your comments your concerns uh ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com you can find us on facebook and twitter and instagram at ripping the rack podcast uh brian where else can they hear us well tim they can hear us on spotify itunes iHeartRadio, anchor breaker google podcast youtube and wherever else you listen to your podcast in your ears Wow. <laughs> and maybe we'll have some lock letters on monday I was Who providing knows? some sultry music. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Sorry. We Sorry. do it Monday. <laughs> we do it Monday. Yeah. Uh, as usual, you can hear us on Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings. Friday is our Anything Goes edition, hence the reason Tim and Calvin looked like idiots today. And uh, <laughs> and uh, on Tuesdays. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I will speak for myself and for Calvin. Uh <laughs> And on Tuesdays, of course, is Candlepin Bowling. Um, hear us there. You can hear Brian and Marky on Sundays uh, on their Dudes and Belts chat cast. It is on twitch.tv slash Johnny Death Drop. You can give them a listen. Uh, it's really, uh, they do a great job talking about Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling. Um, and Sunday I, night, we are doing a watch along of Milestone 11. From Rocky Mountain Pro. So they're Perfect. a big pay per view. So Perfect. tune in. Excellent. Appreciate it, guys. Have a great weekend, and uh, we will see you guys next week.